Chapter 30, Reincarnation. The question of reincarnation has been misrepresented by modern people, so much so that it has led to a great deal of misunderstanding. The misunderstanding arises due to a lack of knowledge about the different types of ancestral memories or what modern people call collective memory. There are two types of ancestral memories. One is biological and is handed down from generation to generation. The other is spiritual ancestral memory and does not depend on genes. This latter type of ancestral memory is the true basis for reincarnation, and I'll describe it last. First, I'll describe the former kind, which is biologically based ancestral memory. This is the type of reincarnation that has been described in most New Age books. It is a false concept of reincarnation. What it is simply genetic memory of a person's ancestors. Every living person has in his DNA the genetic code of all his or her ancestors. The body's DNA is a recording mechanism that stores all of a person's life experiences. That is how ancestral memories are physically passed from generation to generation. The strands of DNA that pass from parents to child have a wide spectrum of frequencies, somewhat like the frequencies of sound or light. When a person is born, a particular segment of the DNA spectrum stands out as the strongest and is unique to every person. So there is a fine tuning of the DNA frequencies that result in every person having a unique type of body. Obviously, siblings will have DNA frequencies that are very close in the entire spectrum of what they receive from their parents, and identical twins even closer. During the life of a person, it may happen that certain incidents will cause his or her DNA frequency to tune out of its normal state of frequency within the spectrum. Each frequency is a recording of the life experiences of that person's ancestors. Many white people and other non-Black races, especially here in America, have remote Black ancestors. Now, these people are totally white, not part Black, because after seven generations of white and white breeding, the entire Black germ is removed. In other words, if the mixed race child of a Black and non-Black couple later marries a non-Black and all the generations that follow do the same, then after the seventh generation, there will not be a Black germ in their progeny, and they're no longer part Black, but totally white or other races. That is the reason why whites and other non-Blacks can have Black ancestors who lived seven, eight, or more generations before. When such a person is under hypnosis, trance, or some other appropriate condition, even though she will mostly remember her white ancestors, sometimes he or she can relive the entire life of a Black ancestor and believe it to be her own past incarnation as a Black queen, pharaoh, chief, or whatever. Note that the most reported cases of reincarnation are frauds perpetrated by charlatans. The misunderstanding about reincarnation comes when the person identifies that life as his or her own instead of recognizing it as part of the wide spectrum of ancestral genetic memories. And so the modern person under trance mistakenly believes that he or she is reliving a past incarnation. This remembrance or reliving caused by genetic memory is purely biological, depending only on DNA. And that is what modern people call reincarnation. This is a false, in, false concept of reincarnation. True reincarnation is spiritual and does not depend on genetic memory. It depends on eternal ancestral memory or what we call the mind of God. I'll mention at the onset that the non-Black races do not have the mind of God in them. Therefore, they do not experience true reincarnation. This statement may surprise many Black people but that's because most of us have lost the knowledge of who God really is. The reason God cannot incarnate in them is as follows. At the beginning of every new universe, there is only one earth, the first earth. It sits alone in infinite space and is inhabited by 1 billion, 8 million original people. They are eternal people, the first gods who come from a recently completed universe. They descend upon the first earth in 1 billion, 8 million black bodies whose blackness comes from the ether that surrounds the first earth. As I've described in an earlier post, ether or space is pure blackness. 
the gods take the blackness of the ether as their skin color, because from this blackness, they can create every color of every living thing, since the black color contains all other colors in it. The black color lives physically in the body in the dominant black gene, which is the source of what modern people call melanin. The dominant black gene is what in ancient scriptures is called the throne of God. The body is called the temple of God, and the black gene is the throne upon which God is seated. Without the dominant black gene, there is no throne upon which God can sit. In other words, God uses the black gene as the source for the life creation of living things. It is the seat of the 144,000 aspects of God's goodness or morality. It is the central point from which the original prototypes of life are created, each one taking its form according to each aspect of God's pure character, and each one also taking its coloring from the infinitude of colors contained in the black germ. Therefore, simply put, without the black germ, God cannot incarnate in a human body. He or she would be impotent, unable to create life or to give form and color to the universe. When I say create life, I don't mean reproducing babies. I mean creating animals and plants out of nothing, as described in the biology post. All the non-Black people on earth were made from Black people. They were not made in the same way that animals and plants were created, i.e. by giving form and color to new life, but rather they were made by removing color from their original Black ancestors. The way the original ancestors removed color from themselves was by suppressing their own dominant Black gene. Every Black person has a dominant Black gene and a recessive light gene. When the Black gene is accidentally suppressed, then the light gene comes to the fore. And the children born to such parents among Black people is an albino. Now, a Black albino still has the Black gene, the seat of God, but it's suppressed at conception. It's possible to create even from a suppressed Black gene but the albino would have to undergo extensive rituals of initiation to bring the suppressed germ back to the forefront, much more so than is ordinarily the case. The non-Black races are different than Black albinos in that in them, the Black gene is completely absent. It takes exactly seven generations of deliberate breeding to completely breed out the dominant Black gene. That is how the first race of non-Black people was made 6,000 years ago. From the first race, Hispanic, Latin, Greek people was made. The second race, Semitics, i.e. Arabs, Jews, Persians, etc. From them was made the yellow race, and from the yellow race was made the white race. All these races of non-Blacks no longer have the Black gene in them. This is the reason why no light race parents can ever give birth to a Black baby. Because the absence of the black gene, there is no throne in their temple or body upon which God can be seated. Therefore, God incarnates only in black people. Any black person who feels even the slightest degree of discomfort when reading the above statement should know that this is caused by sympathy due to a lack of knowledge. If all black people on earth regain the true knowledge of who God is and who the devil is, they would immediately lose all sympathy for the non-Black races. The 1 billion, 8 million original gods are the ones who incarnate on earth every time a Black baby is born. They incarnate again and again endlessly. Their incarnation is not determined by biological lineage. It is preordained by them in eternity long before they're born. The repeated incarnation of the 1 billion, 8 million original gods is the true form of reincarnation. Every Black person alive on earth today is an incarnation of one of the 1 billion, 8 million original gods. We have incarnated time and time again since the beginning of the universe. Not only do we incarnate on earth, but we also simultaneously incarnate on other earths throughout the universe. God, the Black person, is not restricted to one location. Our incarnations transcend both time and space. At the conclusion of the universe, when every earth that can be inhabited will be inhabited, there will be over 125 billion trillion trillion inhabited earths in the universe, each one having a population of 1 billion, 8 million black people. 
all of whom are the incar incarnated personalities of the 1 billion, 8 million original gods. That is you and me and every black person on earth. I hope that clarifies the falsehoods heard from new agers about reincarnation. I was disappointed though that you didn't go deep in, into the differences between the two types of reincarnation, biological and ancestral. Was it, is it the ancestors reincarnating in successive generations? Could you expand on that? And you mentioned that the non-black races were created by suppressing the black gene. Why were the not light skinned races created? The people reincarnating as us are the 1 billion, 8 million original gods. That's you and me. We have incarnated again and again, forming new personalities with every reincarnation. Therefore, our ancestors are ourselves as different personalities. You have incarnated countless trillions of times ever since you, along with the 1 billion, 8 million gods, created our universe. But each personality is an independent, separate individual, exactly as you are today. All these personalities, our ancestors, continue to exist forever as individuals after ascending into eternity in the divine custodianship of the 24 elders of our earth. At the end of the universe, you will untie with all your incarnational personalities as will each of the 1 billion, 8 million gods. Even though there will be countless trillions upon trillions of individual personalities, they will be your personalities, meaning you as the original God, one of the 1 billion, 8 million. Again, there will be 1 billion, 8 million gods manifesting as innumerable personalities, each one knowing himself or herself as the one and only God due to the indescribable state of divine unity. Biological incarnation, on the other hand, is purely a recollection, a memory of the lives of our biological ancestors, never spiritual ancestors. The memories are permanently recorded in our DNA. When a light race person sees these lives or relives them in her mind, she is not reliving her own past incarnation because only the gods reincarnate and they reincarnate only in black people. There is eternal continuity in the lives of black people caused by the repeated reincarnation of the same 1 billion, 8 million gods. There is no such continuity in the non-black races. Every newborn one is brand new with only biological ancestors, but not spiritual ones, i.e. no mind of God in them. At the end of the universe, long after the non-black races are extinct, their incarnational experiences will be taken by their maker, the God Yakub, who will permanently hold them for all posterity as his creation and possession. As to why the non-black races were created, I'll answer that when I talk about ascension and the true Israelites, the chosen people of Yahweh. Intrigue said, Quote, incorrect. This assumes that the mystical concept of reincarnation and karma is true. It is not. It's a complete fabrication. Every person born is brand new, never having lived before. It's God's way of renewing him and herself. Only the mind of God, or as it's called, the spirit of God, is eternal in the person. It has no karma and does not take part in the so-called spiritual evolution, which is a fallacy. End quote. You said here that every black person was a reincarnation of one of the 1 billion, 8 million gods. Is that not true? Is there a different type of reincarnation you speak about? Reincarnation, as I've described it above, is true only for black people. There is a vast difference between true reincarnation and the mystical concept of reincarnation and karma that originated out of the East, especially India. This false concept of reincarnation was brought to the West by various Indian gurus and gullible Westerners who went to India to learn it. It's a false concept, but like everything taught by the non-Black races, its falseness is so subtle and close to the truth that it's easy to be misled. They teach that the souls, by which they obviously mean consciousness, of all people are engaged in a never-ending spiritual evolution. The mechanics of this evolution are such that the sins committed by the soul in a previous life are atoned for in the next life or lives. This cumbersome burden of a concept 
is called by them karma. They also make other outrageous claims. For example, they say that it's possible to evolve backwards and lose ground, so to speak. The upshot of all this is that, according to them, the souls go back and forth endlessly, trying to detach themselves from the merciless wheel of birth and rebirth. Some lucky souls, by means of some fluke of perhaps meeting the right guru and parting with the right amount of money, can be taught certain mystical practices by which they can reach enlightenment and be done with the world. Then they'll live in nirvana, sucking eternally on nectar if they're Buddhist or Hindus, or playing the harp forever if they are Christians. Or if she's a Muslim woman, she'll be turned into a virgin along with 71 of her sisters so they can service the perversions of some man. This is such a pathetic corruption of the truth invented by white people that it's not worth wasting any more time on it. There is a type of spiritual evolution that applies to non-Blacks in the mental realm. It's a search by them for God's absolute perfection, which they can never find because absolute perfection was absolute right from the beginning of eternity. Anyone who is not eternal, i.e. who cannot unite with the eternal self, cannot reach absolute perfection. Therefore, they will be involved in an endless perfecting of their character, gaining forever in knowledge and glory as they ascend from heaven to heaven. This spiritual evolution will not occur on earth. There will be no reincarnating of the non-Blacks on earth, as there never has been such. They do not have an original self who reincarnates in them, as is the case with Black people. They were created as images of us and for a purpose. They will fulfill the purpose for which Yahweh made them and cannot transform their existence to match that of Black people who are eternal beings. Thus, by classing all people together, including us, in their mystical concept of reincarnation and karma, they do not serve the truth. They only serve to mislead those Black people who will believe them, thinking that Black people are the same as the non-Black races. 